Welcome to this lecture on the key concepts of seismic design. In this first part, I will discuss capacity design philosophy and then continue with ductility. When designing a structure, several fundamental issues need to be taken into account. The design philosophy includes the selection or identification of design loads, the determination of the appropriate analytical techniques and design procedures. Furthermore, Defining the structural configuration also plays a part. And last but not least, the extent of economic optimization is considered. Design philosophy is very clear for gravity, wind or similar loads, which are either permanent on structures or can act frequently and mostly can be easily identified. Such loads are applied to structures as shown in this graph. The structures are required to be fully operational and remain in elastic range with no permanent deformations or any kind of damage under these actions. This next graph shows the response of the structure in the elastic range in terms of a force displacement diagram. The vertical axis represents the force, which is generally base shear, and the horizontal axis shows the displacement, which is generally top displacement. At any time, the structure can return back to its original position when it is unloaded. In this case, we say that the structure responds in an elastic manner, which actually means that no permanent deformations are observed. Designing a structure with this behavior can be defined as strength-based design, and if the necessary strength is provided, then the members and the system can remain elastic and operational during their entire life. Initial approaches for seismic design were similar to, the, to, the, to design under non-seismic actions. Effectively, this means that the structures like the one we just looked at were designed to withstand a certain maximum force. However, observations after severe earthquakes showed that, in reality, this was not enough. An earthquake is a random and unpredictable event with a certain duration. <clears throat> During strong earthquakes, structures are subjected to cyclic loading and the behavior of the structure is mostly beyond the elastic range. This means that inelastic behavior is inevitable, as can be seen in the animation in this graph. It shows that the ability of accommodating inelastic deformations without failure is very critical in seismic design. This ability is called as ductility. Ductility defines the ability of a structure to sustain large deformations with a high proportion of initial strength and the capacity to absorb energy without failure. It is calculated as ratio of ultimate displacement to yield displacement as shown in the graph. The graph shows the force deformation relationship of a structure or a structural member. The area below the curve represents the amount of dissipated energy in the structure. Ductile failure must be contrasted with brittle failure, which is accompanied by almost complete loss of resistance, generally complete disintegration, and the absence of adequate warning before failure. Brittle failure generally results in sudden collapse, and this failure mode is shear rather than bending. It is possible to design structures to remain in the elastic range without allowing for any inelastic deformations. In such a design, ductile detailing can be skipped altogether. However, this will result in very large structural members, uneconomical structures with limited usable areas. Therefore, when considering seismic effects, design philosophy becomes very important since in most cases, the structural response exceeds elastic range and inelastic deformations and considerable damage are expected. The main goal of seismic design is to control this damage by selecting a proper lateral load resistance, resisting system and proper detailing of individual members. Excessive inelastic deformations should be kept in certain locations of the structure called plastic hinges. These locations are designed with proper detailing to ensure ductile behavior and to avoid brittle failure. This phenomenon can be visualized by a chain which is formed by brittle and ductile links. The ductile link of the chain 
can undergo the required inelastic deformation. Predetermining the potential damage regions or plastic hinge locations in a structure and applying proper detailing to these regions is a key element of the capacity design philosophy. This figure shows seismic behavior of two different structural systems. The structure that can withstand large inelastic deformations before collapse is more ductile than the other one. Blue dots represent the plastic hinge locations, which means they are controlled potential damage locations. Generally, if the number of plastic hinges, or in other words, controlled damage locations increases, then the ductility also increases. In a frame structure, it is always anticipated to have plastic hinges to occur at beam ends rather than column ends. Therefore, a strong column, weak beam concept should be followed. The design should ensure that the column capacities are higher than the beam capacities. So now you know more about capacity design and ductility. In the following section, we will continue with the key parameters of seismic design. Thank you.